and welcome to the Folklore and Fiction Podcast. My name is Kelly McCath Morin. I'm a PhD candidate in the Folklore Department at Memorial University of Newfoundland, and I'm also a speculative fiction writer under the pseudonym C.S. McCath. The Folklore and Fiction Podcast and Dispatch synthesize these passions with a focus on folklore scholarship aimed at storytellers. You'll find the Folklore and Fiction archive along with the rest of my work online at folkloreandfiction.com. Interested listeners will find a link to the current dispatch in the show notes, where a more comprehensive record of this episode can be found, including a bibliography and other references. This episode of the Folklore and Fiction podcast was first published as a newsletter in October 2020. I'm recording it as a supplemental podcast now so that new listeners and subscribers have an opportunity to engage with the material. In it, I'm writing about child lore, with help from scholars Gary Allen Fine and others, author Philip Pullman, and the Choral Scholars of University College Dublin. I'm also exploring the use of child lore in storycraft and providing you with an exercise on the topic. How Folklorists Understand Child Lore Child lore is a broad category, so let's begin with the table of folklore types commonly studied by scholars who work with this material. Early childhood lore. Bogey warnings and moralistic stories. Nursery chants. Nursery games. Nursery jingles. Nursery lullabies. Nursery rhymes. Parental evasion and put-off answers. School-age lore. Calls, cheers, chants, and yells. Defiance and retorts, humorous narratives, modern topical verses and songs, jeers, taunts, and reproofs, mockery of school, teachers, subjects, etc., parodies, mock speeches, and backwards and nonsense verses, rhymes to upset, shock, and tease. Games ball bouncing, hopscotch, and rope skipping, choosing and counting out. Jacks, marbles, and mumble peg, marching chants, clapping games, singing games, and technological games. Regular readers of this newsletter might already note that child lore is not a genre by itself, but contains folklore from many genres. For example, chants, jingles, and rhymes are examples of language and verbal lore. Bogey warnings might take the form of legends, but they might also be drawn from myths and other kinds of narrative. Even ball bouncing, rope skipping, jacks, marbles, and other such games employ material culture. One of the more interesting nuggets of scholarship I found on child lore suggests it might also be an occasional repository for other types of folklore as they fall out of common usage among adults. Jonathan Roper, whose work some of you might remember from the recent newsletter on charms, writes, quote, It is notable that charms can survive in a skeptical world in the form of child lore, where, of course, they are not thought of as being proper charms at all. Rain, rain, go away, come again a Saturday is, in its way, a magical formula. The rain is invoked by true naming, rather than as often happens by being referred to by its pejorative attributes, Then comes the expulsory element, go away, and there is an attempt to emolliate this harsh command by an element of bargaining, persuading the rain that if it does go now, then a later return is fully permissible, end quote. In terms of transmission, child lore may be passed from adults to children as moralistic stories and lullabies often are, or it may be passed among children themselves as retorts and taunts often are. However, Children tend to repudiate their folklore as they grow up, believing it childish or immature, which makes them unique among folk groups. Finally, while the structure of child lore tends to remain fairly consistent over time, the content of that lore changes with the imaginations of children, the circumstances of their lives, and other factors. Now that we've looked at a few of the ways folklorists understand child lore, let's look at one way it's been utilized. This episode of the Folklore and Fiction podcast is a preview, and you can listen to the full episode on the Folklore and Fiction website. Just click on the dispatch link in the show notes, or go to folkloreandfiction.com and sign up for a free account. Thanks very much for your interest. 
copyright 2019 to 2023. Kelly S. McCath Morin. All rights reserved unless Creative Commons licensing is specifically applied.